We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. The market is always having technical difficulties, but Money Life can help. Every Friday, we're talking technical analysis. We've come for help and we're not leaving without it. Are you confused by the technical jargon and terms? This is what makes you confused. Don't you get it? This is confusing you right now, isn't it? Our guests will talk about the techniques they use each day to analyze the market and tell you what they see now in some of the market's numbers and charts. Please stand by. Technical difficulties are temporary. They'll tell you about the trends they see and how you might react to them to plow through the market's technical difficulties. Yeah, I'm pretty confused, all right. So stay tuned and get ready to cut through the confusion with Chuck Jaffe talking technical analysis on Money Life. Indeed we are, and we're joined today by Tony Turner. She is the president of Trendstar Group, the author of Invest to Win. And like any good book on technical analysis, Invest to Win is kind of timeless. Because if you're learning about what you want to be looking for, what you want to watch for, while the charts and the things might be current and changed, the basic techniques are there and they are timeless. And that's why Invest to Win is still worth checking out today. Tony's worth checking out as well. You can do that at TonyTurner.com, Tony with an I, and also on Twitter at Tony Turner Trade. Tony Turner, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks so much, Chuck. Always a pleasure to have you. We finally, on, on Thursday, saw a little bit of a spike in volatility, which is enough to make everybody kind of perk up and go, hey, maybe something's happening. But the truth is that anybody who's talking at even intermediate time frames kind of is like nothing really is going to change here on the market for a while. Are you that way as well? You know, Chuck, I've been, uh, and I think the last time I was on, I've been waiting and waiting. We know that, um, and I've said this before, we know that markets of industrialized nations move in cycles, that we know price doesn't go up forever. And we do know, if you can remember back, and I remember it vividly, to March of 2009 when we thought the world was coming to an end for sure, uh, the market has basically, with the exception of 2011 and a little bit in 2012 and 2016, the market's been pretty much going up. Uh, we can call it the S&P 500. Going up pretty much in a straight line. It's, I mean, it's the biggest bull market practically ever and uh, because I'm a worrier because I'm a trader as well as an investor I know that back to industrial the, the markets of industrialized nations move in cycles they move up and down that's healthy like the tides go in and out and so I've been kind of standing on one foot and the other foot here waiting for a pullback because pullbacks are healthy now we always have to give them a reason we always have to come up with a big darn reason as to why the market pulls back. Um, it's pretty simple. It can just be profit-taking because maybe price-to-earnings ratios are getting too rich. But after all that said, Europe was down on Thursday. The, it looks like the tax plan is going to get delayed by the Senate. That's a reason happening on Thursday. Uh, we've just got stuff going on here that are making people say, hey, maybe I'll take some profits. That being the case, when you look at these kinds of moves, how much do you say, I'm, I just want to focus on that longer term where I think everything's going to kind of smooth out? How much do you want to say, hey, you invest, a, you inject a little volatility in the picture, you create some short term opportunities? Well, you really do. And that's why everybody's like, oh, no, don't let the market go down. I'm saying, yes, please let it go down. Let us get some volatility because then we can look at some stocks that we've wanted for a long time that sell off a little bit, and now we've got great opportunities. I mean, November, December, January are seasonally, and, and I'm going to say typically, and most of the time, are the three best months of the year. So, you know, I'm probably the only kid on the block saying, gosh, I wish this market would pull back a little bit, would retrace a little bit, so that those opportunities that we have in the next three months are really, really good ones. I don't want to buy high and sell low. I don't want to yeah. do that. No, <laughs> definitely not. Now, is there anything out there at this point that you believe can rein the game? I mean, you talked about the tax plan. The market, to some extent, has held up because everybody's saying, hey, when we get it through, it's going to wind up being a good thing. 
gonna the be. assumption at this point is it's going through. I mean, so it may be delayed, but truthfully, there's nothing that seems to be out there that would derail this. Now, that shouldn't get people going, wow, I'm the most optimistic I've ever been. But how much do you worry that we're going to get blindsided by something? Chuck, we always get blindsided by something. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's the way the world works. Fortunately, we haven't been blindsided by much in, in quite some time. You know, in the back of my mind, Korea or North Korea worries me. And, and it's pushed back a little farther than it was. But, you know, we don't know there's going to be a tsunami in Japan until it happens. We don't know a pandemic starting, God forbid, until it happens. So there's always something. We, we always have to have a reason for you and me and or, you know, I should only speak for myself, to say the market needs to pull back here. But in fact, it's just the way it is. Nothing much we know of goes up forever. Everything has to take a rest. And I've been telling my people in Tony's Market Club for three weeks, take some profits, take some profits, get some dry powder. We've got great opportunities ahead. When you talk about great opportunities ahead, how much, if at all, do you favor opportunities overseas to what you're seeing domestically right now? Because there, there is a little bit more of the volatility. Yeah, and, and you know, I saw Thursday, uh, uh, Germany, the ETF gap down, France gap down big time. Uh, I, I think there are opportunities in Europe, and they certainly had more than we had in some ways. I personally tend to stay in the U.S. where I get what's going on. I'm just I'm just smarter about the U.S. than I am Germany. So, except for the ETFs, I don't. Or I, I mean, except Europe, except for the ETFs, I personally don't wander over there very much. I just find so much going on here, and this is more my ballpark over here. There you go. Well, we're happy when you're here because you hit it out of the ballpark every time you're on the show with us. Tony, thanks as always for joining us. Thank you so much, Jack. Tony Turner is the president of Trendstar Group. If you want more information, go to TonyTurner.com and don't forget to follow her on Twitter where she's at Tony Turner Trade. Okay, this was a great way to start the November 10th edition of Money Life. Up next, it's the big interview. We'll have that when Money Life returns right after this message. Stay tuned.